Hey guys, let's talk about why you should have plants in your decor. Hey guys, I'm Michelle. Welcome to Wildish Living. Today I wanted to talk about something that I love almost as much as vintage, and that is plants. I came across this magazine. I don't know if anyone has seen it. I think it's uh, it's real simple. It's called The Power of Plants. And it gave me the idea to do a video on why you should have plants in your house. Now, I never used to have plants. I used to have a black thumb, even though my grandmother is Dutch and was always growing gardens and flowers and food and everything. My mother actually had a flower shop at one point. So there's green thumbs in my family, but I didn't think I had the capability of growing anything until actually the last couple years where I have started accumulating, I uh, think, a crazy number of plants. So I do think that every house should have plants and vintage in it. So I just wanted to go through a few reasons why I think it's important to have plants in your house. And I have um, made note of a couple things in here that I thought were really cool that I'm just going to like read a few things to you. And I'll, at the end, I'll talk to you about a couple plants that I have I think that I think are easy for anyone to get started with. If you don't have any plants in your house, or if you do have plants, you probably already have these ones anyway. But a couple of reasons why I think it's important to have plants in your house. Um, here's, um, actually, here's a little excerpt. It says, the uh, exact origin of indoor plants is uncertain. Uh, written evidence indicates that the Egyptians brought plants inside their homes around 300 BC, while the ruins of Pompeii in Italy revealed that interior plants were used there nearly 2,000 years earlier. Ancient drawings from around this time, same time suggest the wealthy in China had started cultivating miniature stylized trees for their homes. So people having plants indoors, you can see, has been around for thousands of years. And some of the top reasons that you may want to have plants in your house are, number one, it makes us happier. Uh, studies have shown this to be true. Plants can make people feel good. Research published in the journal Hort Science placed workers in different situations such as an office with views of trees and grass but no plants, an office with the same views with plants, and an office with no windows but filled with plants. The subjects were then asked to report how they felt. Perhaps not surprisingly, workers with the view and plants felt the happiest. So it's just scientifically proven that we are happier when we have plants around. Plants ease stress. Um, plants make us feel better physically. And plants improve productivity. So there's lots of studies on all of these topics that you could go on and you could google and definitely go down rabbit holes on on all of these but we know that just being near nature makes everybody feel a lot better i know i love to go out for walks in nature um, with lots of trees and grass and all kinds of plants growing it just makes me happier living in a city and living in a place where i don't have a lot of greenery around me i need to get out and walk in nature a lot so i think that is one of the reasons why that now I tend to have a lot more plants inside my house so that I have that nature in every room that I can enjoy on a daily basis. So that is one reason why I like having plants. And I just think it also plays off nicely with all the vintage stuff that I have in my home because they kind of both go together, I think. Um, a couple more things uh, that I like about having plants, and this goes for gardening as well, even if you have a little balcony, a tiny backyard, a huge plot of acreage and like anything in between I think growing any kind of plants or food or flowers in your own home or space is really important and beneficial to you um, both body mind and soul uh, so if you can get your hands dirty in some dirt even if it's just repotting your plants in the house like getting your hands in that dirt is really going to help you mentally, emotionally, and physically. So it's good for exercise. If you can get outside and do some gardening, you're gonna get some vitamin D by being out in the sunshine. Make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. It will help you sleep to get out in nature. Um, and it will also help to de-stress yourself as well. 
um, as well as being a mood booster. I think a lot of us already know these things, but I'm just going to here and give you a little reminder of the reasons why I think it's important to have some plants in your house. Now, there was one something else in here that I just wanted to read. Um, about Oh, they have studies also shown that they help to relieve uh, post-traumatic stress, which I thought was interesting. They... Um, there are people, I think I heard of in England, they are um, prescribing people with post-traumatic stress uh, to do some gardening or potting plants or growing uh, plants in their home. And they've noticed that there's a correlation with that and the um, decrease in the amount of stress and trauma that these people have. So I think it's really important that we all need to try it. Uh, here's a nice little quote here too. Trauma is a too vivid reminder that all blossoms, including us, will one day wither. Gardening is choosing to live. So gardening and raising plants are kind of a state of mind, really. But as well as all the good stuff that comes along with having plants, I just think aesthetically, overall, they're very pleasing to have in your house, whether, you know, there's like so many different sizes, like little miniature plants that are nice on shelves, on bookshelves, um, just tucked in little spaces you have here and there, medium-sized plants for your tables or small pieces of furniture that you have, and then larger plants that can sit on the floor or on stands that can fill up corners of rooms. If you have room for it, like having a nice indoor tree is one of the best things you can have in your space, I personally think. One day I'll have one <laughs> when I get a bigger place. But and I don't even care if you want to have a faux plant in your in your house I think it's better to have faux plants than to have no plants at all because I think just uh, visually it says makes us think of real plants or it makes it look like real plants so I think even having fake plants is going to give you that sense of peace and um, inspired by nature feeling that even having a real plant would so I'm not mad at people that have fake plants. You got to do what you got to do. I do have a mixture of real plants and fake plants in my house. So I, no shade to people that have fake plants. There's a lot of really nice ones out there now. And not everybody can care for plants. I have killed my share of plants. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I have trouble with succulents for some reason. I either, I don't know if I'm overwatering or underwatering. Something I'm going to work on. So yeah, I think that having um, plants in your house is just as important as having some vintage items. They both bring like character and a really nice sense of coziness and nature into your space. Um, you know, and there's nothing better to me than putting a nice plant in a vintage pot of some kind. You're kind of combining the two together and making your space unique and, and kind of cool. So I would highly recommend looking for something like that as well now there's a couple plants that I do recommend that um, if you are just starting out or want a couple suggestions for easy ones these are ones that I kept alive somehow and that is the pothos plant that I have up here that's almost 15 years old it's survived so much um, it, if, if I can grow this plant for 15 years anyone can grow one because I have neglected to water it one more than it several occasions <laughs> it's still it's still there you can cut off vines it will start growing more so that's a really good easy one for anyone to start with um, the other one is the snake plants they can grow in low light they don't need a lot of water I have several of those and I love the like architectural kind of structure of them how they're so tall and you know thick and they're really hard to kill as well so that's another great one um, what else is good? I have a Chinese evergreen plant. It just seems to always be growing new leaves. Um, it doesn't need a lot of light, um, but it fills up a big space because it's a big kind of bushier plant. I love that one. Um, I don't have a spider plant, but I've heard from many people that a spider plant is a super easy one to grow. Um, and it's nice because you can put it in a hanging basket somewhere so it doesn't actually take up any space on a table or anything. So. There's probably a corner of everyone's house that you can put one of those in. And then they're easy to propagate if you want to grow more of them because they get the little babies on the end that you can take off and start a new plant with. So um, in that respect, you can grow more plants from it or share it with your friends or family. Okay, you can see a couple 
of my plants. Don't mind the mess that I have. I have small ones. I have some that sit on the floor on like raised pots. I've got my pothos. You can see that it has some really long lines on it. Some go all the way to the floor. And this one goes all the way. You don't mind the yellow leaves. I think it's just normal. That one goes all the way down and trails to the ground. But you can also see in my shelf, this one here is a fake one. And that one there is also a fake one. But I like them because it kind of breaks it up. And it's just a good way to use like real and fake. But I don't have to water all of them. But I still have the qualities of the real plants in here. Um, with the other ones that I have. So there's an idea of how to mix both. Okay, here's a few more. There's my big Chinese evergreen. It's quite a large plant. It fills up this whole space behind my chair here. And then by my TV, I have a couple more plants. So there's one of my snake plants. Don't mind that. See, that's a little succulent that um, was dying, but I think it's coming back. I don't know what I did there, but. Um, and then on this side, I have another snake plant and a little peperomia, I believe it's called. And I like to mix it with my vintage stuff. My orchids, they don't really get enough light here, but. And again, I mix it with, um, there's a faux plant on that shelf. There is a dying real plant on that shelf. I have to, it's so delicate that I don't think I'm as good with the delicate ones as I am with the sturdier plants. Um, and then there's another uh, pothos on that shelf that I actually grew from a little cutting and it's doing pretty good. So again, you can see I'm mixing real and fake and that's okay. We can do that. It's whatever works for your house. So there's a couple ideas of what I have for my plants. But yeah, those are just a few plants that I would suggest, but everyone should go out and get some plants and decorate your house with them. Put them in um, all the little places where you might have your vintage and coordinate them together and make your home very uh, cozy and pretty and aesthetically pleasing to you because it's also going to give more character to your space as well. So if you don't already, get yourself some plants, whether they're real or fake, it's okay. We still love you. <laughs> like I said, I have both. Um, so get out there, get your plants, get decorating, and have some fun. And let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite plants that you like to use in your decor and that you would suggest for other people to get and where are your favorite places to keep plants in your house. So thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you on Wildish Living. Take care. Plants.